Welcome, friends, to our online service on this ninth Sunday after Pentecost. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and also, also with, with you. you. The Lord is our light and our life. Oh, oh come, come, let, let us, us worship. worship. Let us pray. We thank you, O God, that you have again brought us together to praise you for your goodness and to ask your blessing. Give us grace to see your hand in the week that is past and your purpose in the week to come. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray together the collect for purity. Almighty God, God to, to whom all hearts are open, all, all desires known, known and, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration, inspiration of your Holy Spirit, Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now the call to confession. God of justice and grace, you desire mercy, not sacrifice. Forgive us for neglecting the weightier matters of the law, and hear us as we confess our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, in penitence we confess that we have sinned against you, through our own fault, in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have left undone. For the sake of your Son, Christ our Lord, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon your sins, and set you free from them. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We pray the collect of the day. Let us pray. O, o God, God, you sent your Son to heal and to bring peace. Give us the stillness that restores our spirits, and the grace that brings healing. Through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We now listen to the word of God. Listen to the good news proclaimed in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 6, beginning at verse 30. Glory to Christ our Saviour. 
the apostles gathered around Jesus and reported to him all they had done and taught. Then, because so many people were coming and going that they did not have even have a chance to eat, he said to them, Come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. So they went away by themselves in a boat to a solitary place. But many who saw them leaving recognized them and ran on foot from all the towns and got there ahead of them. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. So he began teaching them many things. When they had crossed over, they landed at Genseret and anchored there. As soon as they got out of the boat, people recognized Jesus. They ran throughout the whole region and carried the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went, into villages, towns or countryside, they placed the sick in the marketplaces. They begged him to let them touch even the edge of his cloak, and all who touched it were healed. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. Gracious and loving God, thank you for the gift of your word. And I pray that in the written word and through the spoken word, we may come to know the living God. Amen. This is the third week that we find ourselves in Mark chapter 6. It's a chapter full of action and incident. Now in the first part of today's gospel reading, the disciples whom Jesus has sent round the countryside to teach and to heal came back from their tour of duty and reported to him all that they had done and taught. And so Jesus listened to them with his full attention and with his usual understanding, Jesus saw that they were tired out. And so he said to them, come to a deserted place with me and rest a while. And so Mark tells us that many people were coming and going, and the disciples didn't even have a chance to eat. And so it was for Jesus, no rest, no peace. Because Mark tells us when Jesus saw the crowd of needy people, he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And then our gospel reading skips over quite a lot of verses. It takes us to the second part of today's gospel reading, verses 53 to 56. And this tiny passage of four verses tells a story of something that occurred after Jesus had performed some remarkable miracles. It occurs after the story of the miraculous feeding of the 5,000. But it also occurred after Jesus walked across the Sea of Galilee during a storm in the midst of the night. It's a story that would be easy to pass by, but I have found this tiny passage of four verses to be a wonderful breath of fresh air. It's not only a delightful story, but it's also an instructive story that I think deserves our attention. But let's back up to verse 45. After feeding the 5,000, Jesus tells the disciples to get in the boat and to head to Bethsaida. But there was a storm, and the storm and the winds were so bad that they couldn't make it there. And so Jesus came to them walking on the raging sea. And when they finally anchored, it was not in Bethsaida, but it was in Gennesaret. Now the winds of the storm had altered their course. They did not intend to come to Gennesaret, but the storm is what brought them there. Now this place, Gennesaret, is a very interesting place. Gennesaret was a small fertile plain located on the west side of the Sea of Galilee, just a little south of Capernaum, which was the center place of so much of Jesus' earthly ministry. But its name also means Garden of Riches, and it was described by the ancient historian Josephus 
as a place in which the seasons and the climate came together in such a way as to allow for produce beyond normal expectation. It is said of Gennesaret that the soil was so fruitful that all sorts of trees could grow upon it. The walnut tree, the palm tree, the olive and the fig tree, which usually require diverse conditions, flourish together here. But what makes the story even more remarkable? Not only was the land of Gennesaret fruitful, but so was the gospel in the hearts of its people. Mark tells us that when Jesus and his disciples came to the land of Gennesaret, the people of Gennesaret recognized Jesus. And it was a recognition of him that motivated them into immediate action. The people of Gennesaret came to Jesus in droves from all over and carried the sick on mats to wherever they heard Jesus was. So clearly they recognized him as the one whom they had heard so much from probably nearby Capernaum. This one who taught people the truths of the kingdom of God and who validated that teaching by healing lepers, raising the sick, giving sight to the blind, casting out demons, restoring those that were paralyzed, and even controlling the wind and the ways. So clearly they believe the things that they have heard about Jesus. They recognize him for who he was. And because they did it, it was necessary to persuade them to bring needy people to him. Now they quite readily, as I said, ran to do so. So Mark wants us to contrast Jesus' experience in Nazareth to Jesus' experience in Gennesaret. In his hometown, Nazareth, as we heard two weeks ago, the people that should have known him rejected him. And as a result, he couldn't do any miracles there because of their lack of faith. But here in Gennesaret, the people had far less knowledge about who Jesus was, but they had more faith than the people of Nazareth. And as a result, Jesus performed healings that were so great that everyone who even touched the edge of his cloak was healed. Now, something they probably clearly learned through the stories of the woman in Capernaum who had been suffering from a bleeding condition for 12 years, who had said, if only I may touch his garment, I shall be made well. So it was their recognition of Jesus that motivated them into action. So the question is, do we see Jesus in our lives? Do we recognize him as someone who makes a difference to our lives? Maybe one of the reasons that we are not more motivated to bring other people to Jesus is because we don't sufficiently recognize him for who he is. But if we truly believe that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son and that all the answers to human need are found in Jesus, then it will become the burning passion of our hearts to tell others about him. And so when we recognize Jesus for who he is, we also recognize the power he has to transform the lives of those who trust in him. And so in conclusion, like the people of Gennesaret, may you and I grow more and more to recognize Jesus for who he is. Amen. Let us declare our faith in God in the words of the Creed. We, we believe, believe in God, God the Father, Father from, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Confident in God's love and endless compassion for all people, we place our prayers before him in faith. 
Jesus, the Good Shepherd, we pray for the Church, that in its various ministries it may never lead anyone astray, but will always follow faithfully the way of Jesus Christ, the loving Shepherd of his sheep. Strengthen our bishops, priests, deacons, and all who minister in your name. Lord, during this time of interregnum, we pray that a faithful shepherd may be raised up to guide the flock here at St. Michael's. We particularly pray for the faithful and continuing hard work of the many who contribute to the life of our and your church. Help us to appreciate the roles of each other. Lord, in your mercy, hear our our prayer. prayer. We pray for the world we inhabit, the world we have inherited and will pass on to the next generations. Teach us to look after it carefully and wisely, to share its gift more, fa- more fairly and work together to ease its sufferings. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for peace amongst all nations, especially in Ukraine, Israel and Palestine, where tensions remain high and a positive outcome seems to be remote and difficult. Give wisdom to all in authority, especially the leaders of the nations throughout the world. Direct this and every nation in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honour one another and seek the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We think and pray for the many people in many parts of the world, including our country, South Africa, where there are major storms and floods. We pray for those affected by the severe weather in Cape Town. We ask for you to be with all who have suffered loss in the floods. For those who have lost homes, we pray for shelter. For those who have lost livelihoods, we pray for financial security. For those who have lost loved ones, We pray that they may know comfort in their mourning. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Christ, the great physician, you had compassion on the crowds who came to you from far and wide, bringing with them those in need of healing of body, mind and spirit. So too do we come before you today and ask for your healing presence and power for those who are sick and those who give care. Bless those who are undergoing treatments, recovering from surgeries, facing new diagnoses, and living with chronic conditions. We pray especially for those on our pew leaflet. Restore to them the healing and joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Merciful Father, we thank you for those who have loved us, nurtured us, encouraged us, and mentored us, some of whom are no longer with us. We remember those who have died recently and those whose anniversaries occur at this time. May they rest in your eternal peace. Bring comfort and reassurance to those who mourn that you are with them in their pain and sorrow. Lord, in your mercy, hear hear our our prayer. We rejoice in the fellowship of St. Michael's and all your saints, and commend ourselves and all people to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these our prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We now say a prayer over the offertory. Faithful Father, thank you that you give the gift of abundant eternal life. You have said that you are a good Father who gives us good gifts. Your generosity overflows to us. Everything we have is a gift from you. As we bring our offerings to you, we give back to you from the abundant blessings you have given us. May our gifts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our God. Amen. Amen. As Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Our Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your name. name. Your Your kingdom kingdom come, come. your Your will be done, done. on On earth as it is is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. 
Amen. And now the blessing. May God's word be in your heart. May God's word be on your lips. May God's word be in your touch. May God's word direct your feet. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Amen. Go now in peace to love and serve the Lord. In, in the, the name, name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen.